This is Sky Elabar, Big Braden from the Greasy Strangler, and you're listening to Without Your Head. Well, welcome to the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neil. That would make me terrible, Troy. Mm-hmm. And I'm mm-hmm. Michael St. It- Michael, the visiting weirdo. Well, welcome. Welcome oh, thank back. You. It's good to have you. Uh, it's great to be had. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite guests. I'm sure I speak for Troy. Yeah, without a doubt. Love having yeah. Michael on. So you were you were just telling us off air that you were doing a music video with uh, Phil and Salmo. Yeah, I did this one uh, called Choosing Mental Illness, uh, where I play Nurse Ratchet. And it's kind of an homage to, uh, uh, God, I can't. I believe I can't remember his one name. One flew over the. Oh, all right. I thought you were talking about one flew over the cuckoo's nest. I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> A Elish Foreman film. Oh. Uh, I worked on him. I worked with him on uh, that Larry Flint versus America or something. Oh yeah, uh, people versus relations. With yeah, yeah. Woody Harrelson, right? Yeah. Yep. And uh, well, I didn't really work with him, but. We did speak for a minute, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was a uh, apprentice sound editor on Amadeus way back. Oh, well, uh, that's pretty rocking, yeah. Yeah, it was. Except editing drove me up the wall. I just, uh, <laughs> uh I mean, it's much easier now because you don't have to do linear editing, but at the time, everything was, you know, cutting film and gluing it in place and then putting it back in the reel in the same place, Mm -hmm. hopefully, and junk like that. But, uh, yeah, it's come a long way since then. Uh, I'm really pissed at Skype. Uh Uh-huh. They should be working. But more about me and my shameless self-promotion, since Skype isn't going to do anything for me. There's a signing for Extremities tomorrow somewhere in L.A. Hopefully they get me there. Um, and uh, let's see. So and what, I did. Uh, what's Tropical. Extremities? Extremities is a truly gory film, which I have a brief thing as. Uh, the killer unmasked. Uh, and if you're not into really gory junk, you can just watch the beginning of the movie and you don't have to put up with it because uh-huh. I'm in the beginning, uh, as they're torturing me. I wish I had all the footage because most of it didn't make it, but, uh, mm. there was this great scene where, uh, ah, what's her name from sleepaway camp? Cuts my fucking dick off. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I everywhere. Right, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I don't need to know hunters. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I need to know to know that I'm watching this movie. <laughs> Great. And uh, let's see. And I did some voiceover for a thing called On the Couch. Uh... That's a short. I did a short with Mike Lanzini called 12, The Twelve Golden Rings. Uh, that's part of a feature uh, called The Twelve Deaths of Christmas, which should be out fairly soon. Uh, oh, wow. And I uh, went to the Dominican Republic for 21 days to work on... Uh, Tropical cocktails with Jim Hoskins again. Wow! Oh, excellent, excellent. So, what, what was it like being? Have you ever been the, to the Dominican Republic before? Well, when I was really little, I was in Haiti for a day because the ship stopped there. But uh, uh, I, well, at first I thought I was truly blessed being there because I was only scheduled to work four or five days. And, uh, I had this beautiful condo on the beach overlooking the swimming pool and the incredible beautiful women that I saw there. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, you know, in the Caribbean. So I went swimming in the Caribbean and I went swimming in the pool and 
they had a nice bar on the beach with a restaurant, and that was all wonderful. Um, and uh, I guess I ate something because I spent a week just sitting on the toilet. <laughs> I learned to oh, multitask, no. though. I could uh-huh. sneeze and shit my pants at the same time, <laughs> uh, which is something I, I really had never done before. <laughs> I, I always thought Carlin it. said that was impossible. Well, maybe, but, you know, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I was, you know, pushing the limits a little bit there. and uh, <laughs> Oh, no. And, uh, I don't know. It was uh this sounds like a, a marvelous time. The the characters I played I loved, especially this uh sleazy Dave guy. Uh or uh he was a real retrobate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh Did something you play multiple inspired. characters? Yeah, I I'm in the last three episodes of the first season and the first one I played was a scalp tester. Uh, I'm sort of like a food critic, and this guy uh, uh, scalps people and uh, broils them and serves them at his restaurant, which I was reviewing. And uh, then uh, I was the uh, sleazy Dave character, and then I was a waiter. (laughs) Uh, We were serving rather obtuse stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I see that uh, some of the other uh, cast members from uh, the Greasy Strangler are in it. Sky's in it. Carl Solomon. Yep. Uh, and Carl Solomon uh, gets quite a few really good juicy parts in there, too. I wish I could remember the name of the woman who played... Uh, one of the cops because uh, she was incredible. Uh, she's uh, well, she's just a really good actress. And uh, well, everybody else there was really good too. But yeah. And the guy who played uh, with me in uh, the scene that I did as uh, Sleazy Dave, he's another one to look at. I can't remember. I'm so bad with names. And I was making lists, and that didn't make it. Mm, great. <laughs> Sle- <laughs> Sleazy Dave is a good name. I know, I know. I love that. Yeah. And uh, I love <laughs> that, that character. Of all name. the characters I played, I really like that one. I hope, I hope that guy comes back. <laughs> <laughs> and I get to do him. <laughs> so, uh, that- how did you meet Jim originally? Was it on Greasy Strangler, or did you know him before? No, I uh, read for uh, the Beverly Luff Lynn film a few years ago, uh, and nothing happened. Uh, and, you know, he was there. Uh, I talked to him very briefly. And then... Uh, a year or so later, I got a call from a friend of mine I did this short with called uh, Making It, um, Kat, Katarina Fabrik, who's also a really good actress and makes those short movies, keep herself busy. <laughs> uh, but uh, she said that they were looking for me, so I found them and read for the part. And I met Sky, uh, the casting directors who worked really hard with me, uh, deserve a lot of credit for me getting that part, really. Um, and I remember Jim asking me if I would do nudity, and I said, yeah, as long as I don't have to look at it. Uh, <laughs> that didn't work out very well. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. I know. The first time I saw the thing, I was appalled. (laughs) Because I just didn't envision myself quite like that. You know, Uh I never really felt naked because I had that loin, you know, that fig leaf on. 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, it was so, it was just well, strange. But I remember somebody saying, "Get that microphone away from him." <laughs> <laughs> did uh, what what part did? Uh, did you read for like when, when you're, when you're do, uh, for the audition, like, uh, was there a, what particular scene was it? Uh, I'm not really sure. I think I read all the major scenes that he had, that he had dialogue uh-huh. in. Um, uh, and I'm pretty sure I did them quite a few times. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you think of the script? Cause it's such a, you know, obviously a bizarre movie. I personally love it, but, it's uh I when they said I would be hired, I was overwhelmed really because mm-hmm. I had just moved my mother to San Diego and for the last I don't know how long I've been taking care of her and I it got to the point where I really couldn't anymore and my brother is 12 years younger so he got the, the responsibility. And uh, then all of a sudden this showed up, and I hadn't even read the script until I got the part. Uh, they sent it to me in a PDF file, which I couldn't open. And, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it went on from that. When they told me I was doing, uh, oh, what's that guy? The, the, the detective. uh mm-hmm. I hadn't even read that part yet because I was only, <laughs> I was concentrating on, uh, you know, the greasy strangler part. I didn't mm-hmm. realize that he was also that guy. So that turned out to be a lot of fun, especially because yeah. either my mustache or my teeth fell out on just about every take. <laughs> 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 Which really uh, makes the scene, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. it it helped. I don't know, and I really liked that uh, grease, which was so good for my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so you said that uh, you know you thank the people really working with you uh, for getting the role. So, like, uh, what what exactly did they do? Did you? Uh, originally, like, uh, approached the role differently? Like, were you going to play him uh, differently than you ended up playing him? I didn't really know what to expect at that point, because I, I really don't audition very well. Uh, since then, I've I've had two auditions, which uh, I guess didn't go well, because they never asked me back. And uh, the rest of these parts just keeps showing up, which is a godsend as far as I'm concerned, because I'm still trying to make enough money so I can afford to die, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope Otherwise, I, I, this, you will get the bill for the funeral. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. I don't know how I feel about that now. No, I'm because ho- I want you to live a long time. So I don't. I don't, I don't mind either. Enough. Actually, I'm kind of enjoying myself <laughs> most of the time. You know. <laughs> well, now you have more incentive, Neil, to want Michael to live a little longer than he was planning. Yeah, oh, because I'm going to put that in my yeah. will if I ever write. Send <laughs> <laughs> the care of nasty Neil Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, so you mentioned the first time you saw it, you were appalled. Uh, um, what did you think of the rest of the movie? And uh, did your did your view of the movie change over time? Well, it changed by the next time I saw it because okay. I got over the shock of seeing me uh, right, right. rather quickly. Yeah, you just begin to realize that. Well, hey, in twenty years, I'm going to wish I looked that good. <laughs> Because I see stuff I did in the the 80s, you know, and and I wonder what the hell ever happened to that guy, you know. Uh I understand. So you also mentioned about like doing editing and sound editing. What what, what are all the different uh, roles you've had like uh, in making movies? Well, I started in production 
uh, at Zoetrope uh, while they were going under on uh, a film called Return of the Black Stallion. And uh, I learned a lot. Then I, uh, somebody invited me to do a play in Fort Mason because I, I think they, they thought, oh, well, he, he worked at Zoetrope for Francis Coppola. He must know people, you know. So uh, I had this thing, Visions of Simone, which is a Bertel Brecht play, and I had three roles in it. Uh, and because I wasn't very good yet, it, my first role was as a French uh, sergeant, and my second role was uh, a French refugee, and my third role was a German a German soldier. So if you you know, uh, well, it looked like you know I was a French sergeant, deserted, became a refugee, and then joined the Nazis. <laughs> <you know? laughs> and I, I'm sure Bertolt Breck, when he wrote it, never intended that to be the case. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> But it was fun, and then yeah. I got uh, asked, because I was doing a play, uh, some porn people asked me if I would do a straight part in a porn flick, and they were offering 300 a day, and I thought, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. And that's pretty much where I got my on-camera on training, really, was... Uh, the most naked I've ever been was in the Greasy Strangler, and uh, I did, I don't know, according to some sleazy website, I was in that business for 10 years, although I don't think it was that long, but uh-huh. I did, uh, I played a reporter, I played a talk show host, uh, I was a director, uh, you know, and I, I got to work with some actually really good people. Mm-hmm. Who uh, taught me a lot? Mm-hmm. So uh, and, uh, you were never you never came up for you to be a performer in those movies. Uh, they asked once, uh-huh. but I figured at that point I'm in my forties. This is not a good time to start this career. <laughs> <you know>? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> uh, you know, and I, I really didn't want to, uh, you know, although there were some very lovely women there and, uh, well, anyway, uh, <laughs> but it was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. The first was one it? I did was, was this thing called matinee idol. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a year later when it came out, I went to see it and that's when I decided I'm going to be a movie star. Because I looked so much better flat than I did in three dimension. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time I've ever heard anyone say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, uh, so that was your first time seeing yourself on the big screen. Yeah, I mean, I uh, well, you know, other than yeah, it is. <laughs> And then so, I uh, I started doing extra work and doing anything I could to get on camera. I did a short called Popcorn Obstacles, which I'd really like to see, mm-hmm. uh, because that was a 15-minute short by this guy, McKella, who apparently at the time had a great reputation. Mm-hmm. And it was shot over three months. And in that three months, I gained a lot of weight. I shaved off a mustache, so I had a painted mustache for part of it. Uh, I did about a 10-minute narration, or not narration, of, uh, you know, what I was thinking in my head, and because uh, I'm a film critic in the movie, and it ends up in a big popcorn fight, <laughs> which was so, a lot of fun. Yeah. So that you, I, where is that? Where is that short? You, it's not. I have no idea. I never got to see it. I know it, he showed it once, and my agent dragged me off to meet. Uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, 
Ellen DeGeneres, yeah. She was there was a party at her house and she wanted me to, he wanted me to go there. So I did because you know my agent is my boss really. Mm-hmm. And uh, I met Bobby Goldthwaite and uh and a few other people but uh later on Ellen remembered me from that party because I apparently endeared myself so well that uh she had me kicked off a couple of things that I was on <laughs> oh, as no. an extra on since then. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I couldn't I don't understand how anyone could not like love like you. It's well apparently, fun. you know, I I haven't always been so congenial. And I remember a good friend of mine telling me when I got the greasy stranglers, just don't shoot yourself in the foot this time, because I have a tendency to do that. And I have on those autograph signing things I was doing. Mm -hmm. I blew that all out. (laughs) How so? Oh, I insulted the wrong people. Oh. (laughs) And, uh got carried away with myself. You know, I guess you always get to a point where, oh, I'm just so cool. <laughs> and I'm really not, but, you know. <laughs> I was ready that to last talk weekend that in Arizona, to... I thought I was. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I was sad I, I couldn't make it to that one, the, the Mad oh, Monster yeah. Party where you're at. Ah. Uh, so, yeah. what... <laughs> so was it... <laughs> <laughs> is that is that when things happened at that at that one or was it li- later? Well, no, that was the end of it. Uh, I pretty well pissed off Evan, and oh. uh, <laughs> that's something you can't do, I guess. And yeah. uh, I know I, him. Well. I know Evan well. I'll yeah, try to put uh, a good word in for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him if he gives me an address, I have his cash. <laughs> but uh, no, because I didn't. I don't know. It was it was a really confused mix up, mix up uh, that uh, Sky was involved in. And uh, <laughs> oh, this this too bad. I will say I am friends with with se- with several people that. Uh, that I don't think are allowed at, 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 at Mad Monsters. So maybe me putting in a good word won't do anything, but I'll Probably try. Probably not, but, right. but I would appreciate it, you know, because, well, I'd appreciate at least giving him the 60 bucks I owe him because I, at the time I didn't realize I owed it to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when the, I was asked, I said, fuck no, and got out of the truck and went home. <laughs> uh-huh. I see. Uh, well, that's and that may have been the last Maybe, we'll <laughs> Maybe we can get things smooth. Though. I saw the pictures; they they were very fun uh, when you guys were uh, basically nude in the in the uh, in the photo ops. Yeah, I saw one when I was doing uh, uh, the five golden rings that uh, uh-huh. they had at our set there. That was me. Uh, being pruned by the makeup lady while somebody else was reading me my script. <laughs> and I'm, uh-huh. you know, and it, it almost looks like an old master type painting, except yeah, I'm sitting there sweet. being naked and ugly and, uh, being uh-huh. pruned by a, a actually rather attractive woman and looked on over uh-huh. by another attractive woman. But he had yeah. that set. I guess uh-huh. that was, I think Bill Polpot or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, Phil Pope. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, uh, oh, and another place I can't remember, but it's a really good little, uh, toy and collectible store in Vegas. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know he owns that. Phil yeah. Phil Pope. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he and his wife are really cool. And, uh, I Wait, just found out that, uh, the girl I did the uh, the first one, another with, has a uh, one man show going up in New York. Uh, the I don't know, right after the first of January. Uh, that's Pauline uh, Rojas. 
Uh, she's really good, too. Did you ever see another? Hello? Oh, see what? Hello? Uh, Did I ever see what? Another. No, what's that? It was a, well, it was a short, and then they blew it up to a feature, but as a short, it was really good. Oh, as a feature, it kind of lost it, I thought, but uh, that was uh, the first time I'd worked in 12 years. <laughs> how, how did that come about? If you you know you weren't uh, you weren't doing anything for 12 years, how did it come about that you, you were in something? Well, uh, I have this friend Dave Fine. I don't know if you know of him. He's done a lot of movies in this genre. Uh, he was at one point my agent uh, when I first got into the business. He got me my SAG card on a thing called Light Blast, starring Eric Estrada. Very cool. <laughs> and uh, he uh, I don't know. Where were we? <laughs> uh, uh, you said there was your uh, another was your first uh, uh, yeah, the, the first, first time you worked in 12 years. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wondered how that, it came about. Uh, well, we went to a screening of one of Dave's movies, and uh, the Vernackis were there, and uh, one of them made a comment that I I look sort of like uh, Carl Lagerfeld, and uh, and I said, yeah, I uh, I did Carl Lagerfeld lookalikes on Ugly Betty for the first couple seasons. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And so what, it's, uh, what what kind of stuff do you like to watch? Because uh, I don't. Are you a horror movie fan, or what kind of stuff are you into? I I just like things that move me one way or another. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh you know, and I I pretty much watch everything. It's like my taste in music, although I haven't really paid any attention to music in the last few months, which is strange because I should. But, uh, you know, I, I like this uh, Olivia Manville and the Troop Aquatic. Uh, they're out of Michigan. And I guess Olivia's father turned them on to the movie. And they were out here recording and made it a point to come over and have lunch with me. Uh -huh. And, uh. Oh, that's pretty awesome. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it worries me a little bit because I remember this, <laughs> this, when I did the video dead, uh, there was this band from Sweden, uh, called Union Carbide that sent me a bunch of stuff for my birthday. And I don't even know how they found me, but. Mm -hmm. It got there, and I thought this is really cool. And so I, you know, I listened to a bunch of their music because I'd never heard of them before. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I'm hearing that the BBC is no longer going to be playing their music because oh. they're too pacifistic. <laughs> and this is, you know, at the beginning of the first <laughs> Gulf War. Well, <laughs> oh, <laughs> so much for me having fans. <laughs> 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 You're back on the right people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all we need is the power. Because you know? <laughs> we're sorely lacking in that area, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so what what kind of, like, I was going to say, what kind of people like the Greasy Strangler? That sounds very strange, but uh, so... <laughs> Well, do, is it like all different people who are fans of the movie? Because it is so bizarre. And uh, uh, does I, it just appeal? To, are you surprised by the the different people who like it? I'm surprised by the amount that it's still growing. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I know, let's see. There's a stockbroker in San Diego who loves it. Uh, there are a bunch of musicians who seem to like it there are some people who just can't stand it but i would say most of it is a positive review and most of these people have watched it multiple times i know uh 
Uh, I have myself. Yeah, me too. But that's because they brought me to the screenings. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've done it willing. Right. <laughs> I would too, actually. I uh, was going to watch it the other day, and I noticed I don't even have a copy of it anymore. <laughs> I've, I actually have a big stack of DVDs and Blu-rays, and honestly, right to the right here is uh, the Greasy Strangler Blu-ray. Yeah, I don't have a Blu-ray player, so hang on. To it. Right. I sent my Blu-ray copy to uh, Rebecca, Rebecca K. Felden, my uh, publicist and semi-manager and wonderful <laughs> assistant. <laughs> uh, she's done a lot for me and uh, takes the heat. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, I guess people have borrowed it and mm. uh, not brought it back. Yeah. And I know Mike Lanzini, that- uh, the guy in Vegas who did uh, five gold, the five golden rings, also made mm. an action figure of me. Oh, no Which way. Which is pretty sweet. Yes. I, yeah. seen <laughs> I know I've arrived now because I have an action figure. Oh, I have to see this. That's awesome. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find you a picture, Troy. I'm trying. Yeah, to, uh, definitely. I'm trying to scroll through, but I'll find you one after the interview if, if okay, I can't find it during. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? How is it? Like uh, He-Man sized, or is it how, uh, how big of a uh, figure? I don't know. It's uh, six. Maybe six, seven inches tall. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, they're signed and numbered. And uh, I think there's uh, 50 of them in existence. Oh, and that's they're ana- that. badass. And huh? they're anatomically correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's, that's awesome. That's totally badass. <laughs> I was thinking of having one chrome to putting in on my hood. But I live in a dodgy area, and you know they're always grabbing hood <laughs> ornaments around here. So. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I did have did it you, hanging from my rearview mirror once, but <laughs> <laughs> did you ever forget uh, your pink greasy hat? I, I, I believe last time we had you on, you said you'd lost it. Um, I have one that belongs to a friend of mine in case I need it. Uh, right. but, uh, no, I, I, I didn't get another one, but that's okay. Mm, that's, all right. Uh, when, re- uh, recently we went to Canada for the first time, uh, Jason, who does our written reviews and myself and at the border, they asked us what, what is with those pink greasy hats? Cause we were both wearing our greasy hat. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, well, that- uh, was a movie. Uh, that was uh, Ant Thompson uh, came up with that. The guy from uh, New Zealand uh-huh. uh, was the only one who's got a grosser logo than mine was when I had Rash Productions. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. was Rash? Pro- what was Rash Productions? Rash Productions was me uh, trying to make uh, things. I we did. Uh, I helped make some punk records oh, in really? the seventies. I did, uh, or a little, yeah, in the seventies and in the eighties. I did a Rash Productions did a country western test thing. And, uh, then I made a sitcom pilot because I started, decided I wanted a small recurring role in a sitcom. <laughs> right. So I'm sorry. Uh, that was a, anyway, <laughs> but, uh, it was a thing called Juice Box. And, I don't know, it was, it was good, but it wasn't, you know, I, I didn't, I still don't know how to sell things. I can only make them. And, uh-huh. uh, I'm not even sure. Well, I have all the raw and the masters and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I conceived that idea, and six weeks later it was shot. 
Um, I got a sound stage, called in every favor I could, borrowed, begged, and stole all the money I could scrounge up, and I put it together and shot it in a day. And uh, then it took me two years to get it edited. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, well, what's this going on with uh, you and Dean Knowles? I believe it's uh, yeah, we've. Uh, he's not sure if it's Fist Dick or Dick Fist, but uh, it must be some some kind of uh, music thing going on with you and Dean. Yeah, he. Uh, we, I don't know. A while back, uh, when he saw that uh, the uh, you know that that music video, the first one that came out, the yeah. uh, bullshit artist. Uh, mm-hmm. And then there's another, that, that guy did uh, another one, uh, uh, it's my duty to hit that booty, something like uh-huh. that. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and he, he said something about, you know, let's, uh, make some music. And, and I'm into that. I used mm-hmm. to have like a three and a half octave voice and I did sing in a couple bands when I was in in the army in Europe and there's a way to get free beer and loose women. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that works. So well, yeah. I'm, I'm interested in hearing this when it comes to when it happens. Well, you probably will have to because I'm sure you're, unless my computer fucks up even more than it has lately, uh, uh-huh. you will end up having to see it. <laughs> yeah, oh, I will. of course, of course. But, uh, <laughs> gotta, uh, Diane Summer Isle wants to know uh, if Michael could play any role in any film, which would he choose? Wow. Uh, I really hope I get to do another role as a lead. Uh, and I really pray that it's something original. Uh, because everything you see is a remake. Although I yeah. wouldn't mind being part of a remake of one of these uh, super expensive uh, special effects movies. Right, right. Put you in, like, yeah. in the new Avengers or something. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Or yeah. I could be the next Magneto or something. Oh, I yeah. like that. I, I, Although I would be Neil totally and I were that. talking about it, and we, we thought that you would make an excellent Sweeney Dot. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I used to do hair. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so I know how to hold scissors. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you meant well, the, I, I thought Yeah, that's the what I there. thought you meant. Uh, I see, I see. Yeah. <laughs> I just had the whole, you know, give me a head with hair, long, beautiful hair going through my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those guys, they... They played in San Diego, but they wouldn't. The city of San Diego banned the play, so the cast came really? down and they went to this uh, park in Logan Heights, which is the ghetto now. Uh, and uh, they did the play a cappella. Oh wow! And uh, I was lucky enough to get to be there. That was what actually it was better there than it was when I came up to LA and saw it in the theater when the you know it was a play yet. Right. And uh it's just, you know, the fact that we were all in it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tropical cocktails, that's like that's gonna be a, a series? Mm-hmm. It's on uh, Midnight Swim or Adult Swim. Oh, Adult Swim. The, oh, yeah. Yeah, Adult Swim is part of the Cartoon Network. Uh, I don't know if it's running now or not because I just have an antenna, and I don't even get two of the three networks, which doesn't really matter because they are all the same now. But, uh, yeah, uh, I hope that's an amazingly successful because it is also another thing that's original. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I know the last job I had was uh, Jim had me in to do shrimp vocals. Really? Uh, yeah. Shrimp talk like this. And just kind of with it, I guess. <laughs> 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 oh, <really? laughs> so is, it, is that fun for you doing the uh the voice acting oh god yeah it's uh akin to stealing candy from a baby who's asleep <laughs> <laughs> i i uh i truly i truly love it i hope i get more All i right. mean you don't have to do makeup you don't have to do wardrobe and hair and mm. hit your mark and all that bothersome mm. crap that yeah. is, you know, totally essential for film. <laughs> 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 all you need is the microphone. <laughs> you have an excellent voice. So totally you don't even have to get dressed, I imagine. Well, yeah, I did because I had to drive to the valley. You know. Sorry. All right. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Otherwise, I could have been naked in my living room. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how I usually am for the interviews. Ah, very good. <laughs> <laughs> so what's uh, what's five to... golden rings? No, go on. Sorry. Five golden rings. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, a short film by this guy Mike Lenzini, and it. Uh, I have a toy and collectible store, uh, which is the one that's owned by the Pilpots in uh, Las Vegas, and it's an amazing place. But uh, they even had me or my my action figure in a place of honor above the toilet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I uh, I have a partner who is a demon and we solve problems for people and the problem we were solving was this guy uh, wanted to get rid of his wife and her, and her boyfriend and uh, so you know I grabbed a little of his blood dropped it in the thing with the coins and the demon took off and did the deed <laughs> I'm not going to say anything more because, uh, you know, you should want to see it. <laughs> yeah, of course, definitely. I it's probably not... YouTube story anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like shorts have become uh, popular over the last few years. I think so. You know, they're. It's good that they are because you know that you can shoot them in a day, mm -hmm. and that's really important because it's the most expensive day you've got is your shoot days. Uh, you know, you've got lighting, sound, makeup, hair, food, and all this other stuff going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and changing camera setups and, you know, and it, it's very time consuming. So if you can do something in a day, it usually turns out to be a short. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, I think, um, you know, I guess it's like the festivals have uh, made them more popular because, you know, people can see them there and, and uh, maybe the streaming sites like YouTube because people place to uh, to watch shorts. Because I think, yeah. you know, back in the day, what, you know, what would you do with the short? Either it would play somewhere, but then it would just kind of disappear after that. Yeah, pretty much. Uh I know I did one that's looking for places to go called Night School. Mm -hmm. Although I think that title has changed too. Um, I shot that in Chattanooga. And uh, it's about ready to come out. Um, an extremity, like I said, there's a signing for that tomorrow somewhere. Mm-hmm. And they asked if I could come, and I told them I don't drive at night. So if you can get me there, and hopefully they'll get me there. Anybody know those yeah. people? Have them get me there. 
I need to get out of the house, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that I'm sure they'll make it happen. How how could you have an a signing with that without you there? Well, mainly because I'm very minuscule in the movie, although the character <laughs> You're that, just supposed to agree with me. Oh. Know. Well, you're right. How could they possibly do it without me? <laughs> I don't want to get you in trouble. With that, so. I don't care. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, you, you mentioned, you know, the action figure and then the, the cool hat and stuff. Uh, has any fans, like, made, like, uh, cool, like, Reese Strangler fan art and, and sent it to you? Yeah, I have a poster that somebody sent. Uh, I love the tattoos I've seen. My favorite of the tattoos is the one that has uh, Big Ronnie on one end and the Greasy Strangler on the other end of this hot dog. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and there's another one, uh, me uh, check my cheeks. And then there's one of uh, Sky and I. Uh, that people have placed on their bodies. Uh, <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm really humbled by that, actually. I mean, it, it's, uh, uh, I've become permanently engraved in these people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's gonna, that's gonna be quite the experience to, uh, to see that, to see yourself, you know, tattooed on somebody. It's a shock. It really is. Uh, it's a shock when I still, people come up to me and say, are you the Greasy Strangler? <laughs> and, uh, you know, take selfies with me. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, because it's been, what, three years now? And, uh, like I said, it's still growing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see that myself. You know, uh, more and more people uh, notice it. Actually, when I put up the on, uh, actually, th at least two people said that uh, that they watched it because I liked it. I liked it so much. I talked about it on the show, so that made me feel good. At least I, I brought you two new fans, anyway. Well, bless you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh... But I think you know, in general, though, it's good. Like word of mouth, people you know talk about this you know crazy movie, and then other people oh, yeah. you know check yeah. out and it keeps. But somebody did a needlepoint bullshit artist pillow for me. Uh -huh. Somebody That's else uh, sent me a uh, hootie tootie disco cutie needlepoint. Uh, I have this sweatshirt on that says Big Mike. And oh, I understand sure. they got a cease and desist letter from uh, uh, Spectre Vision over that one because uh, it shows uh, the greasy strangler on it. Yes. And uh, they thought it should say Big Ronnie. <laughs> uh -huh. But uh, and I just got the sweatshirt which I'm wearing now. It's a hoodie sweatshirt. It says Big Mike. <laughs> yeah. And uh, well, yeah, I think I the person my... who yeah, I would say the person who made that, whoever that could be, they thought that uh, it would probably be better not to put big, not put anything on it that that someone else owned. But apparently, it <laughs> didn't work out. Uh. <laughs> Well, I have the caricature. Yeah. And, uh, like that. And it's very nice because it's cold here in Long Beach tonight for, well, I guess because it's winter or almost winter. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah. well, what's, what's cold there? What is it like, you know, like 60 or something? Uh, <laughs> we're probably going to get down into the 50s tonight. Uh, all right, all right. It's 33 uh. here. Yeah, I know. I'm from the frozen north. I'm from Poughkeepsie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I used to live in South Dakota. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yeah, that's probably much colder than it's here. <laughs> yeah, you look at the newspaper and you'd think they were having a heat wave in Alaska when I lived in South Dakota. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So when does this is is that music video out now? The one where you're Nurse Ratchet? Yes, it is. It's on Housecore Records, uh, and uh, you know it's Phil H. Anselmo and the Illegals. I was supposed to meet up with them when they were playing down here 
because I was, they were off for a day. I was going to hang out with them for a day in uh, Oceanside before they played San Diego. And, uh, but then I got a call giving me this voiceover the next morning. So I thought, now nah, there's no way I'm going to be able to get there in time unless I turn around. So I had a bail on that, which kind of bummed me out. I really would love to be grilling and chilling with those guys because they yeah. were fun that day. We had a really uh-huh. good time. <laughs> uh-huh. So you were filming something when we had you on last time when we were talking about BFF girls. Uh, what was that? What were you filming at that time? That was uh, choosing that was mental it? illness. Okay, I thought it was. I remember you mentioned about uh, being a nurse. Yeah, yeah, because I I completely spaced you out, and all of a sudden you're on the phone, and I'm I was out front of the hotel smoking a cigarette in New Orleans. <laughs> you know. uh-huh. <laughs> Never got to see any of New Orleans, just the hotel, the set, mm. the hotel, and the airport. <laughs> yeah. See, so you'd never been you never been in New Orleans before. I've never been in New was, Orleans myself. I was there once, but I was too drunk. I vague, right. vaguely remember getting into a friend's plane, and oh, when we uh-huh. came back, he ran out of beer and he landed it in the in the, like uh, a Seven Eleven parking lot. <laughs> Went in, and got a six pack of beer. I just got out of the plane at that point. <laughs> I didn't really want to have anything more to do with it. We were back in Dallas. Uh, and uh, and uh, he was starting it up, getting ready to taxi out into the street and take off with the cops drove up. <laughs> 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 but I was impressed. I mean, because Seven Eleven parking lot, even if it is empty, it's not very big. And he uh, had a little, uh, wow. like a Piper Cub type in airplane. And he just set it straight down on the uh, parking lot. That's that's pretty wild, yeah. Yeah, especially <laughs> considering he was totally drunk, too. <laughs> <laughs> we both were. I mean, I fell out of that plane. Getting out of there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, glad, I'm glad you're doing well. Uh, BFF girls seem to uh, be do- it seems to uh, be uh, very well this year at all the different festivals. They could won a lot of awards. And... Yeah, good. I think you could buy it now, too. Yeah, you, you can uh, rent it or buy it on video on demand. Yeah, all right. And I think Extremity is like that, too, now, because uh, otherwise they wouldn't be having a signing. And I went to the, they had a premiere at the Chinese Theater, mm-hmm. and uh, that was kind of fun. I love that place. <laughs> yeah, I was I was there once. Few yeah. years ago for a Human Centipede three premiere. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a good time. Ah. I didn't know you then, or else I would have looked you up. Yeah, well, you do now, and if you're ever out here again, you better. <laughs> All right, definitely. Well, I would look forward to that. Oh yeah, yeah. I have uh, some good bourbon and some, and we can always have a meal. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's very good. I'm a fan of the bourbon. I can't drink as much as I used to, but I, I can still have some. Me either. I've gotten to the point where I'm having bourbon flavored water. <laughs> <laughs> it's so disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I, went, I went on the bourbon trail in Kentucky a couple of years ago with Jason Mitten, and that was that was uh, a good time. Take you to all the different, all the different distilleries and yeah. A lot of, it's kind of weird because they kind of they kind of encourage drinking and driving because like because it's spread out all around Kentucky so like you go to one and you get like the last thing they do is have the is the the testing the tasting right. so you drink like five shots and then it's like we'll see you and then you go and drive to the other one like you know miles away yeah <laughs> well when I lived in Texas I thought you had to have a can of beer in your hand before you could start your car. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was, uh, I'm amazed I survived that. (laughs) I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. Me too. (laughs) Where's the best barbecue in Texas? I really don't know. Uh, 
I went to one that uh, when I was in Austin that was okay, but I don't know the name of it. Uh-huh. Uh, it wasn't far from the hotel. Rebecca took me there. Uh, and, uh, the best barbecue that I can remember is the barbecue spare ribs at PJ Jang's, I think, which mm-hmm. is a chain Chinese restaurant. Uh-huh. Uh, it's got the, you know, the red yeast on it. Yeah. Yeah. I like that flavor. And we were shooting a movie, uh, a smut film in San Francisco at a house of ill repute. And the woman who owned the house, uh, uh, her son made some barbecue that has never been equaled. Really? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But I know where this whole house is. So if you ever go to San Francisco, (laughs) call me, I'll come up and join you. We can go there and maybe talk them talk them into making some barbecue <laughs> <laughs> we just show up and they're like hey they're like now nah, we just want some barbecue <laughs> yeah really <laughs> no it's this huge victorian house across from a park uh-huh. uh, and uh, hopefully it's still there but yeah. it probably isn't <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but Troy could Troy could still drink a lot of bourbon, so he he can drink. That's true. Uh, I'll be the designated up. drinker then. I'll be okay. Good. Great. Right. You can help me out too then. All right. Very good. <laughs> and then I'll describe it to you guys. Be like, oh, thank man, you. This so good. <laughs> There's hints of vanilla. And, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. No, I'm still waiting for the bottle of champagne Jim Hoskins was supposed to send me. <laughs> no. It's not happened? Nah, nah. You know, I get a lot of these, uh, well, I'll do this, I'll do that. And, uh-huh. uh, or, yeah, yeah, we'll show up, we'll come over. And uh, aside from uh, Liz, nobody has. Of course, she's shown up a few times. That's good. Yeah. I love her. Dean. Dean came all the way from Australia, so that that was a, that was a pretty big uh, trip for him. Yeah, it was. You know, and uh, we went out to lunch and uh, took some pictures. Uh, I guess he got into some kind of trouble when he got back. Yeah, that's too bad. Uh, because I you know, and his, and she was there, uh, and she had an incredible voice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we had this other Australian living in the building at the time who won the opposite competition, this woman, Haley Teal, uh, who I guess is sort of like uh, Australia's Got Talent and Who's the Next Big Star or something like that. But she won one of those and was here in L.A. performing and recording. And uh, she ran it up place in my building <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Did, did do you uh do you stay in touch with uh joe david walters i was wondering how he's doing because i know i don't uh, know i uh i sent him a pair of cowboy socks mm-hmm. uh i sent him to his father's house in las vegas haven't heard anything other than when i talked to jim he said he'd uh gotten in a fight with some people who were doing something up to that he wouldn't stand for and ended yeah. up in the hospital. And, yeah, it uh, was, it was, uh, it was the same time, uh, Jason and I were in England that that happened. Well, yeah. He, you know, so he lives in England. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he's got a barbecue place there. Yeah. And, uh, he's, uh, got the second most popular beef jerky in the United Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess financially he's doing okay. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I was. Uh, I read the story. It was like uh, some people were like uh, urinating. I think outside. He told them to stop, and they just attacked him and like uh, you know beat him pretty bad. I understand. No kidding. Yeah, like oh. I said, they put him in the hospital. And it was not good. Yeah, but I haven't heard anything. I've sent some messages, but most of those people have given up Facebook and. I'm too ignorant yeah. to be able to. Uh, <laughs> somebody sent me uh, Joe Bob's email address, and I lost that before I could get a hold of him because I never did find out if he ever saw the Greasy Strangler. But uh, he did. Oh, Joe Bob Briggs? 
Yeah, but he uh, did uh, uh, he did review Light Blast, which is the movie I got my SAG card on, and uh, mm -hmm. the Video Dead, which is the the first one that I was above the line in. Although I'm not anymore. <laughs> Every time I see that movie, there's less and less of me in it. <laughs> <laughs> really? Did they edit oh. you out for a time? Yeah, well, you know, at the beginning, uh, when Robert Scott made it, I was the first 20 minutes of the film. Mm -hmm. But Avco Embassy wanted him to get rid of it because uh, they wanted younger people running around being chased by zombies. Mm -hmm. And I came back into that one as a zombie, but not as me as a zombie, but as the, uh, another zombie who died. And I was the same height as, so they made me up to look like him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I finished off his role. And, uh, and it was a limited partnership, which I owned part of. And I can remember giving Robert back a quarter point because he was running out of money and uh, things to, to bargain with. And uh, I hear he's the first AD working on Episodic here in L.A. somewhere. Tried to reach out mm. to him, but never got a response. Mm. Uh, um, yeah, I just recently had Joe Bob on the show and... Uh... I can uh, I can hook you two guys up. I'll I'll, I'll get you the email so you can yeah. uh, you can contact them. Yeah, we worked together on uh, Married with Children. Uh, oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, and uh, I was my usual awkward self. <laughs> 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 and he did send me some information on how to get a hold of. Uh, the people at trauma and I screwed that up too. So, you know, anyway, <laughs> but if you, so if you, you out to, there is listening, you... I want to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if people, uh, you know, are listening and would like to, you know, have you in your, in their movie or whatever it is, uh, how would they contact you to do so? Uh, you can get a hold of Rebecca Feldman at, uh, Rebecca at coreprgroup.com or call her at uh, 607 760 2868. God, I hope she doesn't kill me for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Plus, no one listens to this, so it'll be all right. No, no, good. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to be listening to it or you wouldn't be doing it. I mean, I would listen <laughs> to it if I could figure out how to get the, my computer to get it. But I need uh, a computer geek. <laughs> yes, it's. <laughs> There's yeah, probably a lot about California. Yeah. We'll, we'll find, we'll find someone to help you out with the computer. Well, There's bless you again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I say that. I'll try my best anyway. I don't know. Yeah. We'll, we'll try to make well, it. Well, if you don't happen. succeed, you're making a big mistake. <laughs> 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 and you really don't want to piss off Big Ronnie. Nope. I don't. No, I mean, shit, people who didn't piss me off got it. So, I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's always a, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, and uh, I hope you get some uh, cool stuff coming up. I do too, and thank you so much for having me. Yeah, we'll have to do it again sometime. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I'm. I'll uh, get my blue Crocs out and hang out. <laughs> all right. So we wish you good. all the best. Thank yes. you. Thank you. And you too. Get well. Be good to yourself. Thank you. I appreciate this. Oh. The world needs you. I, well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> and I need the world, so hopefully I'll... Uh, <laughs> I'll yeah, hopefully that works out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> once, I heard, once I hit 40, it was... Uh, 
bad times here. So hopefully, uh, uh, hopefully the new thirty. Girl, uh, I woke up so. in a cheap motel on my thirtieth uh, birthday and discovered I had the clap. Oh no! And then at four o'clock in the morning, somebody comes knocking on the door to kick me out of the place. <laughs> So 30 was the bad time for you, then. Yeah, it was a, a, probably my most, uh, well, it was a very memorable birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I know we tried to work this out for video. Uh, uh, I'm hoping in the new year to do some uh, some of the shows uh, with the video, so... Uh, we'll work that out sometime in 2019. We'll have you on and, and do some type of video show. Great. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. Anyway, you, you have a good until we meet again. You as well. All right, as well. Michael, you take care. Yeah. I have to, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we shall return. Thank you, Michael. It's been great. Hey, yeah. thank you. Sound of fun. Blessings and goodbye. <laughs> good night. All right, take good care. Night. Have a good evening. This is Jim Hosking. Jim is the director of The Greasy Strangler, and you are listening to Without Your Head. <laughs> <laughs>